In today's video, I wanted to talk about something that I sometimes refer to as the multivitamin of a guitar practice, and it's something that I think a lot of us are maybe scared to do initially, but it's kind of like going to the gym. The more you do it, the, the easier it gets. Um, and that is transcribing, because I find that if you learn something by ear, you have kind of a more intimate relationship with it and you understand it and internalize it on a deeper level than if you just either read sheet music or in most guitarists case you know read a solo tab off of ultimate guitar so let's talk a little bit about how you would go about starting to transcribe so this is something that i've seen with a lot of my students and once my students start doing it it's awesome because they get a much deeper level of understanding of what's going on and it seems to influence their playing more. I work with a lot of high level guitarists on their kind of improvising and their lead chops and it's something where if you have a bunch of favorite players it's worth doing is grabbing little bits of the melody and seeing if you can take it and make it your own thing. Um, and a lot of us are maybe scared to do it at first but again just a little bit of time spent on it will kind of get you there. So to use as a demonstration I'm gonna actually transcribe something for you that is something that my my student has told me he wants to work on this week which is Always With Me Always With You by Joe Satriani uh, a great 80s shred man from the uh, from the 80s and uh, I just want to show you how I would go about breaking this down so you can kind of see the process and hopefully find that it's a little bit less scary so here's where the kind of lead comes in in the song Hopefully you can hear that on the mic. I'm just playing it on my iPhone. We're low tech today. So that first phrase, sometimes it helps when you're transcribing something to listen to it a couple of times. I'm gonna to listen to that maybe one more time and before I dive in trying to find the notes. And now I'm tasked with trying to find that on the guitar. So, so I think I might have got lucky and found that right away, but typically what that would look like for me, and I will still have to fact check this, but I'd go, you know, try a couple different places, and I'll go back. A little extra bit of the intro. Some nice reverb on that snare. So there it is, I found it. And first, what I'd recommend you do is just try to hunt for the notes. So there I know. Da -da -da. That's definitely the end of the phrase. But again, when you're starting, Take bite-sized chunks. So even if you just find that banana, that's a huge win because you found it by ear. Then I know the melody goes higher. It's a beautiful, beautiful sound. A really melodic player, Joe Satriani. But we want to grab that little bit of melody, and we're just trying to find the notes right now. So. I've got a lot of years on the job transcribing music by ear, so this is a little bit easier for me to do, but it's something that's totally within your grasp, even as an intermediate guitar player. Even as a beginner guitar player, you can pick out little bits of melody. But um, I've now forgotten that second melody anyways. But my top recommendation at first is just find the notes. A lot of players sometimes will try to get absolutely every detail of the playing, and initially I think it's best to kind of grab the notes and then see about adding in the playing techniques. Like for example, there's definitely a slide, like uh, my ears initially brought me to on that opening phrase. But listening back to that that second time, I heard that that G sharp is definitely slid into. So I'm gonna actually play it if I wanna mimic what Satch does. He probably does this. It's gonna slide into that, but then. This definitely also, I think it's a hammer on. So basically prioritize getting the notes first and then start to worry about getting the particular playing aspects. But let's hear this one more time. Was 
towards that next bit. And so once you start getting these kinds of phrases down, then you go and connect those. And I wanted to give you this kind of example of me doing it and talk about this today because when I did my degree in university uh, in jazz guitar performance, I had to do a lot of transcriptions of horn players, and guitar players, whatever it may be. And I think it's one of the quickest ways to actually get things into your playing because you have a deeper connection to it if it's something that you figured out and pieced together by ear rather than uh, just, of course, reading a tab or reading a transcription. If you actually do the work yourself, you learn to kind of hear the idea better, right? Because you've had to listen with greater care to it rather than just trying to, like, you know, match what Ultimate Guitar says to what's coming out of the, out of the, let's be real, probably laptop speakers. We listen to music, unfortunately, these days a lot through laptop speakers and through phone speakers. Not nice systems, but... Um, that's kind of the idea is that when you've actually kind of digested something through your ears, it becomes a deeper part of your musicality. And then the other thing that I've always been amazed by when I transcribe is that a lot of the time we think that, you know, these guitarists that we love are using these, you know, crazy advanced applications. And really, it's just a, a musical approach to relatively simple ideas like this, for example. <laughs> just fairly simple ideas in E major. And the thing about it is you can steal some of these. Like to me the coolest part of the Satriani phrase is uh, That dip there is one of the coolest parts to me. And then the other thing that I love is he's phrasing like a singer. He's not phrasing like a, a guitar player. And obviously there are times to phrase like a guitar player and play crazy shreddy stuff because you can and that's something we do on the instrument and we love it. I love shreddy guitar. You probably love shreddy guitar if you're watching this video. But it's a really good way to absorb this kind of musical sense of what people are doing. And then the next step after you transcribe it, say you've got those phrases, the goal then is to play along with the recording and try to mimic as closely as possible what Satch is doing. So you can sap out as much of the feel of what he's doing as you can and so that you get this practice of playing and kind of assuming that role. And it's really, really remarkable where even if, like, say you only transcribe the first minute of this, you can absorb that feel feeling and apply it to other things where rather than necessarily stealing the exact melody and these exact licks it gives you a better understanding of what it feels like to play music like this and therefore when you're improvising or coming up with your own stuff that experience of feeling like what you're doing you can tap into that feeling rather than necessarily stealing exact licks which is kind of where i think a lot of this idea of you know personal style and everything kind of comes about so that's about it for me today on, you know, this multivitamin that is transcribing. It's something that I've seen improve literally, like I did a Jeff Beck solo with one of my students and he played bluesier and better than he ever had literally in the next lesson after, after transcribing a bunch of it by ear. And again, it's something that it's scary to get into, but once you start doing it, it becomes easier and easier. Again, just like going to the gym, you know, New Year's resolution, the, the 20th visit is easier than the first. And don't worry about, sometimes we put pressure on ourselves to try and get all of the solo or all of this. But even if you just steal little 10 second chunks at first, it's a really, really good place to start and get into this practice of doing. So I hope this will inspire you to maybe go try to learn some music by ear because I really do believe that it sticks with you longer and you get more out of it than if you just learn a song from you know, watching YouTube covers and whatever. And that's the other thing actually really quick. You can always double check your work with a tab or by watching what Satch actually does. Like you can look up a live video or whatever. Um, and that's a really good thing to do to check your work and see where you maybe went wrong. But this practice of actually doing things by ear, I think is really, really great and super beneficial for you when you're trying to learn and absorb some of the stuff from your favorite players. So if you found this video useful or interesting, I'd really appreciate it if you could like and subscribe. It helps me out more than you could know. 
If you'd like to take a guitar lesson with me, I have a contact submission page on my website that's linked down in the description there. I've been working with a bunch of you guys who found me through YouTube and it's been really fun connecting with you all over the world. I teach all levels and genres of students so we can work on whatever's troubling you on the guitar. I'd love to meet you and work with you. And lastly, I've got new videos coming out every Monday and Thursday, so I hope to see you in the next one. And until I do, I'll wish you a wonderful day and I hope you get to have some fun playing the guitar. Thanks.